Top of the morning, all you wonderful, beautiful people out there. Today we're going out with PEARL, which stands for Physiological Ecology of Reptiles Laboratory. Please be what it stands for. I tried to memorize it. I'm horrible at that kind of stuff for whatever reason. Pearl is a research group based out of Cal Poly. If you've watched the vlog plenty of times and you've met Haley a couple times already, you'll, you'll recognize her, you'll recognize the name. We're gonna go out and hopefully find some cool rattlesnakes or do some of the research stuff, let some rattlesnakes go, and should be cool. I figured you guys wanna come along. I got my snake booth ready. There is a link down in the description if you are interested in checking out more about what Pearl is about and what they do and getting more detail on it, which after you watch this episode, I bet you will want to. In fact, you might as well go down there and check it out now. Leave a comment down below if you would go out in the field looking for rattlesnakes. Welcome to In The Field Friday. So, I'm probably not gonna do a whole lot of talking out here, because Haley really knows what she's talking about. I'll just run the camera, let her do the talking. You guys hear me talk all the time. I certainly wouldn't think that this is the place that you would be coming for rattlesnakes. It just, when I think of herping for rattlesnakes, I think of deserts and, and rocks, but certainly not being at a beautiful spot by the ocean like this. Truly phenomenal. What are you looking for down there right now? Um, sometimes these, we found them underneath like, the boardwalks here. They'll actually like curl up and hang out. Snakes here are like half the size of snakes that you find inland. They're a lot smaller and they look different. It's pretty awesome. It's like part of the, one of the components of my project is doing like metabolism and body temperature studies because you're thinking, oh, these guys are smaller. They probably have lower metabolism. That's why they're not growing as big. Um, they're probably living at like cooler temperatures than the Carrizo snakes. And we've actually found that um, amazingly, they're not. They are selecting temperatures at the exact like same range as the inland snakes living at like 100 degrees. They still select the same body temperatures. Um, but for some reason, they are half the size. We don't know why. We can't say it's metabolism anymore because if they're at the same body temperature, they should be in theory at the same metabolism. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like videos of like other vipers, like rattlesnakes or cottonmouths or king snakes, or um, like in response to king snakes and the weird stuff they do, but they actually do certain defensive behaviors that they won't do for like us or other predators. So body bridge or like send their bodies up and make these huge arcs and hide their heads so the king snakes can't get them. They do like crazy stuff. So we're trying to see, um, we have a live king snake, a gopher snake, a king snake model, and some scent swabs, so we're also gonna test that on other wild rattlesnakes and see like which of the stimulus actually elicits a response. Is it visual, is it scent-based? Is it the combination of scent and visual things? Do they respond just to bigger like related snakes? So that's why we have the gopher snake. So that's also something we're doing today too. So we're doing behavior, we're doing thermoregulation, we're doing all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Mass rattlesnake overhaul. All right, let's see. There he is. Found him already? Yeah, these guys are homebodies. They don't go very far. So the whole purpose of finding these guys right now is to get like an undisturbed behavioral observation of the snakes. So everybody kind of follows the main person tracking so we don't disturb them. Cause if we, you know, the snake's fleeing or the snake's like in um, a defensive position against us, that's kind of a wasted behavior observation. We don't actually know what that snake was doing at that time in this weather. So we're trying to see what snakes do at different times of day under what different weather conditions. He usually has a girlfriend with him. He's pretty, he's got a hole that he lives here. So we'll try not to disturb him. He's in a loose coil, 10% exposed. It's the easiest way to pull you out where I'm not ruining your day completely. So he knows his MDO4 because he's got a green rattle. We paint their rattles so we can ID him. Of course, he's not rattling, he's not doing anything because they're not super vicious. They're adorable and we're not doing anything mind blowingly threatening.
all handling we do in the lab is <laughs> extremely hands-off. Um, as Crofab, the wonderful antivenin that's been developed for rattlesnakes, does not work well at all on Pacific rattlesnake venom because their venom's pretty unique. So, you know, if you get bit by like a rattlesnake anywhere in the country, it's the same antivenin to treat all species. And uh, it works better on some and not so good on others. And it works really not well on these guys. So we do everything super hands-off. There's another little male in here. We'll release in a few minutes. Long is 120. 0.890849. Okay. Wind is 2.4. Okay. This is a handheld weather meter. It's awesome. You can get humidity, heat index, wind speed, average wind, temperature, everything you'd ever want on it. It's called a Kestrel and it's pretty awesome because there's an app for it so you can log your environmentals and see if anyone else ooh, in the area has logged um, other environmentals as well. So it's a really awesome way to check like on the ground conditions anywhere. And then we're going to get the substrate temperature because we have it's been proven in research now that ground temperature is more important than air temperature in predicting snake movement and behavior you letting the garter snake go right now female garter snake go we brought her in to get a good look at what themnophis elegans offspring look like right after birth She's a gorgeous girl. She came in super gravid. Drop babies for us. Gonna make sure the babies are good and send them back home. This male we found way on the other side of the field here. And there's a pregnant female who's been posted up and we're gonna see she had a babies in the past week because the moms, you know, they stay, they actually stay with the babies for a few weeks at a time and they'll come out to like actively defend them against predators and they're actually really good moms and family snakes and they actually have kin recognition. They can recognize members of their own family and relatives that are related and they'll seek out areas where relatives are living and yeah, they're actually much more social than anyone ever thought they were. It's awesome. Other scientists have taken like king snakes and king snake models and they'll approach baby rattlesnakes and the moms will come like rushing out of the bushes and like m move their babies out and protect them. Oh, rattlesnakes, you're yeah. looking for snakes. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha, <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> haven't seen any. You don't have to be snake people, but I'm glad to see people like appreciating them. There goes dinner, another ground squirrel. You see that his dinner? Yeah. <laughs> They're so closely evolved with ground squirrels. Like their venom is specifically evolved to target ground squirrels. And the ground squirrels are super resistant to the venom. They'll actually kill rattlesnakes. The ground squirrels will. Yeah, it's amazing. Like all of this is great habitat to look right. Like you saw on the, on the edges of cliffs or right at these fringe habitats is what they love. Awesome. Like perfect spot, reptile spot. There's actually a freshwater creek that part of the year runs through here so you can find like tadpoles from Sierra and tree frogs. Um, tons of garter snakes and racers in here. The rattlesnakes post up in the walls of all the ground squirrel burrows. It's incredible. Oh, speak of the hey guys, got one. <laughs> speak of the devil. they doing here? So we are going to see, so this is part of the king snake behavior test to see if they respond just to bigger snakes like related other colubrids. Oh, I see that. So this is our test snake to see if it was just something to do with um, the species itself of being king snake or with bigger relatives, if it's any sense associated with any colubrids that they respond to. Funny snake bite statistic in the U.S. There's about 8,000 venomous snake bites a year. Um, about two percent of those are what we actually call like legitimate bites, which means they were like 
people stepping over logs or hiking, like not handling snakes, not captive snakes. So like only 2% of those are actually like accidental, true wild bites. Yeah. Of that 2%, 98% of that are males between the ages of 18 and 30. And of that 98%, 74% of that roughly are like males between ages of 18 and 30 with a blood alcohol level above 0.14. <laughs> So there's like a very fi like finite group of people who make up the majority of snake bites if you see where I'm going with this. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a Pacific rattlesnake. It's the only species of rattlesnake we actually have in Slow County. Um, there's no diamondbacks here. There's no Mojave greens, despite what people say. They're not here. Um, but this guy does vary a lot in color. They are, um, between individuals, they can be bright yellow or green or orange or black. They vary within a species about as much as people do. So I always tell people color is not a good way to go by a species because they all look different, like all of us. Um, so this is a little male that we caught last week. We used for a, a color experiment, actually. And we're gonna let him go home. He's probably gonna look at us. He might rattle, but chances are he's probably just gonna bail. Don't worry, you guys could come so much closer. He, they don't wanna use their venom. They don't go after us. He's just gonna go right into the bushes and probably try to go home. Oh, little buddy. So he's just like, wait a minute. There's predators everywhere. Yeah. What's going on? Where do I go? Let's let's slowly back away into these bushes. Um, I love that backwards crawl while he's looking yeah, at you. So that's about as threatening as they get. That's wow. they just want to go home. Yeah. Yeah. So like, well, this looks nice and dark. I'll just go in here. Yeah. I blend in well in here. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, yeah. So much more powerful than watching it on Animal Planet where everything's like the deadliest blah 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 and there's snakes doing crazy shit. And this is so much more real. I always tell people if they showed real science and animal behavior on TV, no. nobody would watch because it would be so boring. <laughs> So Haley's tracking this big rattlesnake she had found before and has tagged and she hasn't been able to find a signal for him for a while now and it's been thought that there might be a poacher out here. There's actually a picture of a guy that's been known to be out here poaching rattlesnakes potentially so she's hoping that he didn't get him, the big snake, and that's not what it ended up happening to him but she's not getting a signal for him right now. And he did live in here for a while. We can actually probably see a bunch from here. In the middle there, there's kind of that pile of sticks, like right behind that green bush. Um, it's a wood rat mitten. And the wood rats build like these huge, big mitten nests, it's like of dead and down branches and stuff. And the rattlesnakes will actually use them as hibernacula. And they don't eat the wood rats. We don't know at all what happens in these like wood rat mittens, but the rattlesnakes will share it with them. And um, that'd be something cool to study in the future. But the rattlesnake I'm looking for uh, overwinters here in this mitten sometimes. So this is kind of hoping against all odds maybe his tag died and he's still living somewhere here in the bushes so I like to check it but oh, that sucks I'm sorry dude it was so sad and like the the data loggers are um the temperature loggers are you know, they're implanted as well and to get the data back you have to get the logger back so that's like a year's worth of tracking data that's just down the garbage. All right guys that's that's it for us. We're at the end of the trail we're back now at the parking lot. <laughs> why, why did that why was that so awkward for me to say? We're done here. Now those boots, practical for snake stuff, I guess, but man, they are not comfortable whatsoever. Thank you, Haley, for having me along on the adventure. I really appreciate it, getting the invite, and uh, I look forward to more adventures like that. I'm going to put a link down in the description, guys, if you want to go see all the work they're doing over there at Pearl and check out more of what they're all about and where they're going and where that's all going, which I'm sure you will if you're interested in what I'm interested in. So thank you. Thank you. Wonderful day. <laughs> Sorry for my, I'm glad Haley did most of the talking today because I just, I don't know, every time I look into the camera for today for some reason, I was just like, I just saw this black hole and it just, it was weirding me out. I don't know, maybe because I had my neutral density filter on there and it was like, I was just staring into this blackness. And I don't know. I'm really glad that Haley did the talking.
Before we get out of here, what do you know? I know. Rattlesnakes. What about rattlesnakes? That their tails have kind of bumpy hoops and when they rattle on it, it makes a warning noise that tells other ones that does other things back off because mm, it's poisonous. Is it poisonous? Oh, venomous, venomous. And that's all I know. Oh, oh. And a black diamond rattlesnake lives in the Arizona desert.